Welcome. This is Emily from the Cottage Kitchen. Trying to get in the right frame here. Do I have any eyes yet? Well, greetings. I'm gonna make some yummy things tonight. And I also need, whenever someone gets on here, I'm gonna ask them if they can read my shirt. Uh, oh, it's some eyeballs. So who is that watching me? Close friend, I'm sure, in the food group. So, so grateful for you guys, and thanks for joining me tonight. I'm gonna make some fun um, British things. So, we'll start with my homemade chai tea concentrate, uh, which is a recipe that I just got off the internet, of course. Um, and then we'll move on to some vegan Welsh rarebit with mushrooms. And I also am making my own English muffins. And so they're proving right now, the second time I had them in the fridge. Hey Noreen, hey Noreen, can, can, is my ring on my right hand? My sisters have to stick together. All right, whenever you can answer Noreen. Okay, because I can click another little button and maybe move things around and make it vice versa. Okay, ring, rings on the right hand. So you can sh read my shirt, it says T. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'm gonna start by boiling my water for my chai concentrate. All right, so we'll, Scout's helping out. Say hello to everyone, say hi to Scout. Hopefully she'll stay in her office on the floor. Okay, so I have my new mortar and pestle too. Comes with this little cute little mat and a brush and a spoon. Complete, complete set here. All right, so I'm gonna move this stuff so I can get closer to it. Always safer that way. So I, I got all my ingredients together ahead of time. Hello everyone. So Noreen, my, if my, if is my ring on my right hand, if it looks like my right hand to you, that's my question. If not, I can switch it around. So you should be able to read my shirt that says T. Hey Bonnie. Hey Scout. A Scout. My Scout said hi to you when she, when I said your name. Okay. So. I have my ingredients all here. So I'm going to pick up my uh, 12 cardamom pods because I'm going to crush those. And my new mortar and pestle. Hope everybody's being safe and staying at home. It's getting really bad out there, so it's uh the best time to be extra, extra safe. You can read it, Noreen. Thanks, Noreen. And hey, Jesse. Good to see you. Jesse's um, one of my tango buddies. So we haven't certainly haven't been able to tango, Argentine tango, in a long time, thanks to the pandemic. So this is my first time using a mortar and pestle. So lots of little cardamom seeds coming out of these pods. Smells super good. All right, so it says gently crushed. I think that's fine. So I'm gonna add these to my pot. Guess I can use my brush for that. And then I also have in here my eight black peppercorns, eight whole cloves. Um, I need to slice off a wee bit of ginger, four inch piece. I'm just gonna slice that and I'm just gonna leave the skin on. So I'm just steeping it in this boiling water. I love fresh ginger. I forgot to put it in my smoothie this morning and I could definitely, definitely tell. Add these slices in here. Scout says, hello everyone.
Okay, then I have my four cups of water already in the pot. My It says four cinnamon sticks. I have my gigantic, gigantic ones from Hoppy in Asheville. Hey, Jean. Good to see you. Those sticks will go in there. Um, I've got also got my three allspice in here, um, which is optional, but I did order them um, just for this recipe. Uh, two star anise, 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 I think, and one vanilla bean sliced down the middle. So I'm going to, vanilla beans are so expensive. So um, I think one vanilla bean is one tablespoon of vanilla. So just keep that in mind. like an angle so you can get two really long ones for but they're eleven dollars it's ridiculous I think so I've sliced those down and then I've also have one eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg in here I'm gonna add this to my water Get out of the way so I'm gonna bring all the ingredients except the tea bags which I already have ready here too um, to boil in a saucepan over medium high heat and then I'll reduce it to medium low cover and simmer for 15 minutes that helps me um, know that I need to get my little uh, pot cover all right dear um, okay so we'll, while that's brewing and I'm watching my cat she's on the washer right now watching us. We'll start with, um, I'll talk to you a little bit about the English muffins. So I got all the dough ready on Sunday and then I shaped them into balls. Six, they make six muffins. So I shaped, separated it, um, and, and cut them into balls. And then I let them rise for an hour. And then I put them in saran wrap and put them in the fridge. And now, now I'm letting them prove one more time before I put them in the oven. So they, hey, Tina. Tina's my cousin. Hey, Marlene. Hey, James. Good to see everyone. Marlene, thanks for coming. Okay, great. Okay, so we're, we'll do the English muffins at the very end. So now we'll move on to the Welsh, vegan Welsh rare bit. My friend Scout and I both think that if we look at that too closely, when we get when we've got our older eyes it looks like rabbit but we're not eating rabbit because we're plant-based so just and for anybody that's new this is our whole food plant-based no oil group that um, I help run uh, for dr. Johnson who is our doctor for many of our group members hey cuz uh, so what we do is we just for health so this kind of nutrition decreases um, your risk for coronary artery disease um, and chronic disease. So it decrease, decreases to hopefully uh, omit. Hey, Misty, good to see you and heal. So we don't eat animal products or oil or processed foods. So we have a diet rich in plants. Scouts, Scouts likes, likes to help. She says, I'll just stay over here in the corner and mind my own business, hopefully. Um, you know, young cats are lots of energy. Hey, Misty. So what we do is we, we treat patients uh, with food as well as medicines. Um, so one of our most famous stories is we got a gentleman, um, our friend Terry off of his insulin pump that he had been on for 11 years and we got him off in seven days with this nutritional treatment. Um, so something that serious is really helpful to be under the guise of a physician. So we were monitoring, Terry sugars 24 seven, even over the weekend. Um, so that's why it's really good to see a plant-based nutrition specialist like Dr. Johnson, who's also the best uh, doctor I've ever met. And my family, I, my stepdad's a doctor and my best friends are doctors, but some, there's something about Dr. Johnson that just sets him aside from every other human I know. So we all um, can be inspired to, to be more like Dr. Johnson. This is a great, gentle human uh, and very, very smart. But he's the first one to say he doesn't know everything about everything, but he certainly knows a lot about nutrition. He's been treating patients uh, this way for over 12 years. 
uh, probably closer to 15 now. I've been with them since March 2016, so my does the time fly. So um, if anyone has any questions, they can certainly uh, ask them here on the Facebook uh, comments. And also, we like patients to watch Forks Over Knives, which is a documentary. It used to be free and streaming on Netflix, um, but now you just have to rent it um, on, I think it's on uh, Vimeo and Amazon Prime. But it's not very expensive, it's like under five dollars, I think. Uh, and then we like them to read the book Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease by Caldwell Esselstyn, MD. So he is like our, our plant based guru. Hey, Don, good to see you. So good to see everybody. Okay, so moving on. My water's starting to boil. I'm gonna bring that down and cover it and set a timer for 15 minutes. watching that okay so I'm making some some fun um, British things hey Russ uh, because I have a British boyfriend uh, and so I'm you know this is the vegan Welsh rare bit with mushrooms so it's kind of a, a vegan alternative there uh, and then I'm making tea because there's always tea when you have a British guy around um, hey Wayne good to see you too okay so and I won't be eating this tonight because I'm saving it for the weekend. So uh, over the weekend, I'll send you a picture of the whole entire um, vegan Welsh rare bit with mushroom ensemble when it's ready to be eaten. Okay, so I'm going to start with my onion. I only have a few things to chop up tonight, so you don't have to watch me chop a million vegetables. And you know what I was going to do also do? I forgot. I'm going to try to see if the sound is better with my little so feel free to give me some feedback what is rare bit again Marlene I don't know it's I'm sure it has like meat in it in the original version um, I should have probably googled that before but I know it's not ra rabbit I don't think um, so it says let me read it to you <laughs> it says the classic, classic cheesy open face sandwich from Wales gets a hearty plant-based makeover using beans and mushroom for a base. The vegan rare bit topping can be prepared up to three days ahead so it's ready to top toasted muffins. Serve it for a light dinner or a cozy brunch or slice for a tasty holiday or game day appetizer. So if you don't want to make your own English muffins, we really like the Ezekiel brand which is uh, in the freezer section. They are in the freezer section at Ingalls. And they're whole food plant-based, no oil. Completely, <laughs> thanks Marlene, completely uh, compliant with our nutritional treatment. So this is, I'm just luckily not having to chop the onion. I'm just gonna thinly slice it. So while I do this, I, I, I don't mean to like preach COVID the whole entire video, but it's just so important that everyone really understands just exactly how bad this is and how really no one knows how they're going to fare with it. So even, even young folk in their 20s and 30s, you know, have perished. Um, so it's not, not a common thing, but it can happen and you don't know if you're going to be the one that's going to happen to you. Um, so it's just, we want to all try not to get it. So and you do that by social distancing, wearing your mask, um, you know, our, we shouldn't be around our, our vulnerable family members now until they're fully vaccinated and really until we're fully vaccinated too. Um, so Dr. Johnson and I got the jab two weeks ago and we're going to, we're due to get it. Let's see, was it almost three weeks ago? So we're due to get it, uh, the second one next, next week. Um, so in case you guys don't already know, uh, you can always follow your county's health department website to see if, when they're taking signups. And then, um, so my, my grandmother was a little too late to get there 
to get it last week, but they put her on a list and she got a call yesterday and she has her first jab on Friday. So that's really um, kind of an emotional thing that, she, that she's finally getting that. Um, and then also like you could go to inglesmarkets.com and get on their list just in case they get it sooner. One of our patients waited for hours on the phone with her, um, I think she got hers on the 13th from um, UNC and Pardee uh, and Blue Ridge Community College. I think they got together. Uh, so she just, she played solitaire while she waited on the phone for hours. And so she got, she got on the list and she was one of the first ones in the community to get it. Um, and then you can also watch our adventhealth.com website. And so that's going to be updated daily. Yes, Tina, I will text you the, the book titles for sure. And also put them in the, in the book title and the documentary title in the bottom of this. Oh, so Marlene, for uh, folks that can't do gluten, so you can make these gluten-free. In fact, the original recipe um, started off gluten-free. So you use the, the Bob's uh, Mill flours, the all-purpose gluten-free, but you have to add um, xanthan gum. Uh, so it, t it tells you that on the package. I didn't read it the first time I made it, but I didn't really notice the difference. Uh, but it, for this recipe, I used mostly whole wheat. wheat. Uh, it calls for two and a quarter cups of flours, flour. So half a cup is the all-purpose with some xanthan gum, and then the rest of it's whole wheat. Um, just so I could just experiment a little bit. So I'll have to, I'm not sure about the English muffins for gluten-free. I'll, I'll take a look at that. Um, Let's see, and you can always use, you know, top it, you know, you could, sometimes I've seen uh, folks that are using like sweet potatoes thinly sliced as toast. So that would work in this, in this instance. I'm gonna start with onions. So I'm gonna wash out my mortar and pestle because I'm gonna crush some thyme. I don't want my rare bit tasting like chai. Okay, so before I do that, I have my mushrooms already washed. Add to my pot here. And then I'm going to get myself a little water ready, just in case I need it. You can saute it without oil, so you just use veggie broth or water or wine to saute your vegetables. And the onion has uh, probably enough water in it that we really don't, and the mushrooms too. We might not need anything to help prevent sticking. All right, so for my thyme, so one quarter teaspoon of dry thyme. Sometimes when, um, when doctor, someone asked Dr. Johnson, like, um, you know, how long, how long will it take or what do I need to do? And sometimes he'll say, well, it just needs a tincture of time. Like, so it takes some T-I-M-E to get better. But some, some patients sometimes think he means like the herb time. And she, they're like, how much, how, how much do I do? Is it dried or, so that's kind of cute. So a tincture of T-I-M-E sometimes is, um, is the answer. See if that will come up faster that way. So this needs to be crushed. I have two reasons for having a mortal and pestle today. Use my little brush there. Put that into my onions and mushrooms. I 
turning down my tea too. It's roaring. Okay, so what I'm going to do is stir this out around a little bit and then cover it. I'm going to add a wee bit of water. there. Perfect. My earrings caught in my hair. Okay, that's better. Thanks, Jean. So, Marlene, you, the chai is very easy. So, you just, it's, it's, uh, it's all boiling. So, all the ingredients will be listed under the comments um, below the, this Facebook Live. So, no worries. Very easy. And uh, let's talk about the chai a little bit. So the chai would be like a treat because we don't really drink plant-based milk um, by the glass because it's processed. So we typically just add it to coffee or in recipes like muffins. But for a rare treat, as Coach Dr. Johnson said, you have to love yourself. This, this is not about depriving yourself. So for a rare treat, you can have a small um, chai latte. So it would just be like, my preference would be the soy milk. So no oil in the soy milk. So my soy milk is the shelf stable kind from Trader Joe's and it's just water and soybeans. Um, but you and you want to make sure that your plant-based milk does not have oil in it um, or lots of, you know, artificial things. So uh, just always check your labels. Um, so oat milk is good too. People can make their own nut milk or oat milk or soy milk. Um, but if you're going to have something like this daily, then what you would do is just put one part concentrate with one part water, and then you could just put a splash of, of plant milk in there. So this is a, if you were going to do it with one part chai concentrate with one part plant milk, that would just be like a, a rare treat, uh, like something you would do on the weekends. Um, thanks, Jean. Okay, so we talked about that. Let me hydrate a little bit. My blueberry iced tea. Anyway, so that's the, the chai. You can make it decaf, and I'm just using um, some English breakfast tea bags. Let me review when I'm supposed to do that. So when I add my tea bags, I'll let steep for five minutes, probably a little bit longer because um, I like it strong. Okay, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna actually start my oven so it's ready for when I'm ready to bake my English muffins. Okay, we're doing great on time. Um, so this is gonna simmer for 10 minutes. All right, I'm gonna watch that. And I'm gonna just start to work on the sauce. So it says in a blender. Um, my my little ninja attachment is still dirty from my smoothie this morning, so I actually use the full blender. I'm going to add my northern beans, which I already washed. And two tablespoons of Dijon or English mustard. I tried to find a good English mustard. But um, it had it had it was processed, so it had like some artificial ingredient in it. So this is um, Annie's organic Dijon, and that's good, very compliant. So two tablespoons. Next on the list is two tablespoons of nutritional nutritional yeast. Some people call it nooch. And I like that Dad got me these, these spoons that have um, one edge goes into a spice container very easily, and then the other edge 
as for when you've gotten the, the other one all wet. So I didn't really realize that until now. Thanks, Dad. So two tablespoons nutritional yeast. This is kind of like a, a cheesy alternative. And then the recipe calls for a nut butter. Um, so our patients that have uncontrolled diabetes, coronary artery disease, or ischemia, so they're only allowed two walnuts a day for fat and a tablespoon of flaxseed meal. Uh, so we try to stay away from nut butters. And even our patients that are allowed, you know, that aren't sick, get to have a quarter cup of nuts a day with half of that being walnuts. But our patients tend to get into trouble with nut butters. Um, so we're pretty much saying that you probably shouldn't do a nut butter. Um, so instead of the cashew butter, I'm going to use pumpkin, pureed pumpkin in this. So two tablespoons. So I'm going to do like two heaping tablespoons of this. Oven is ready. And then black pepper to taste. You can always add more later if you need to. And then I'm going to make some loud noise, friends. I'm also going to add one half cup of hot water. So I'm going to actually nuke that. And while that's cooking, I forgot to tell you that I got my, my new kettle. So on the last Facebook Live, I was just trying out my new rainbow kettle. And it wouldn't whistle even though it was beautiful. So I just ordered a, a new one. So this this is my old one and the and the whistle. The whistle broke. So this doesn't sit right on here so it doesn't whistle. And I have to have a whistling kettle because I'm into a million things at one time. So I got the same brand, which is Chantal. So this wasn't supposed to get here until um, Thursday, but it's here now. So we'll do an unveiling. Since we have some time. My last kettle lasted me for a, probably a decade. I'm so happy with it already. Very classy. Alright. We're, we're going to test it. We're going to test it. I'll, I'll wash it before I use it for anything, but I just want to hear it whistle with you guys. I have my half cup of water and hot water in my sauce. I'm going to move, blend this to a smooth sauce. So part of me want to make a lot of noise. smooth. I have my water in my kettle. All right, fingers crossed everyone. I really love the color, by the way. I usually stick with red, um, but I just love this color so much that I thought, oh, it doesn't matter if I do a little something different. Because I could do what I want. 
I'm an adult. All right, everyone. So, Jesse, you can substitute almond flour instead of the pumpkin? Um, sure. Well, the almond flour, though, counts as a nut, though. So, that's what you have to be careful about. Um, hey, Lindsay. Lindsay's my little sister. She calls me Mimi when she was a baby. She couldn't say Emily, so she calls... She started calling me Mimi. Sorry if you heard all that messing with my earring. Uh, so all my little foster brothers and sisters and my real brothers and sisters uh, my, and my niece call me Mimi. Hey, Tony. Good to see you. Hope I didn't miss anyone. Hey, Gail. I think I've seen everybody. Oh, hey, Terry. Good to see you. I think I got everybody. Awesome. If I miss you, I'll say hello later. Sorry. Okay. So, I'm going to show, check my top holder for that lid. I'm going to turn up the heat just a wee bit because I think I put a little bit too much water in there. So, I want that water to to disappear so it doesn't mess with my sauce. All right, the tea's been going long enough. So the next step on my tea list is to add my four tea bags and simmer. For five minutes. So I'm gonna probably do that for 10. Done with my lid now. My earring keeps getting hot in my. These are not good Facebook Live earrings. Yeah, so um, using almond flour, Jesse, back to that is, uh, you know, it's certainly a plant based um, whole food flour, but it counts as, as a nuts. So you have to kind of like count into your quarter cup of nuts a day with half of it being walnuts. So it doesn't allow you for much. So that's why I like using. Um, if, if for gluten-free folks, they can use the um, all-purpose gluten-free flour, which is at Ingalls. So it's the Bob's Red Mill. Um, I'll, I'll actually grab it for you. And then I can handle gluten just fine. So this is the gluten-free all-purpose baking flour. Um, and then it gives you a little chart on the back to, because um, you have to add xanthan gum for best results. Uh, so it t tells you for what, in what you're going to make, like, and how much flour you're using, how much xanthan gum to use. And the xanthan gum is also uh, Bob's. Whenever I go to Ingalls, I see, I go through the Bob's aisle. So there's like in four different sections of Ingalls. It's on an end cap, it's in the flour aisle, it's in the oat aisle, and then in the like special healthy food aisle. Um, so I always like scan to see what might be on sale. Um, and if it's on sale, I get it. Um, and I just, just saw it. my friend Kendra from Dragonfly Dharma, she said that um, Big Lots, I think it's Big Lots, has Bob's things on sale. Um, so that's good to know. Hey Jane, good to see you. All right, I'm just waiting for my mushrooms and onions and thyme to finish up here. Then I'm going to add my sauce. And then I'm going to let that cool and I'm going to work on my English muffin. So, what, so whenever you are going to serve this, um, you, you put your, you slice your English muffin or you should actually fork split it so you have those nice little um, crusty areas in the middle. Uh, and then you'll just top with your, your mixture. And then uh, you'll preheat your broiler and broil four to five minutes from heat, four to five inches from heat for four to five minutes or until lightly browned on top. And then sprinkle with paprika and parsley. And Mar Mar Marlene, in that book, 
the Practical Magic one, which is, is it Rules of Magic? Um, she said something like, if you if you cut parsley with a knife, then it's, it's bad for your romantic life or something like that. So, so I'm going to start tearing my parsley just because it sounds like something that, who wants to risk that? Um, all right, this is ready for my sauce. And then I'll simmer for one to two minutes until thickened. Scrap my little good stuff off the lid here. Big fan of the silicone spatula. That, that spoon's not going to fully get it. Done. Don't want to waste any. Another thing about vaccines is that once you get your vaccine, you want to just kind of like chillax for a couple of days. So don't go run a marathon or anything. Um, you know, there's potential side effects or risks to, to everything. Um, but the side effect, the potential risk and side effect to getting COVID is much, much greater than any, any vaccine risk. So um, it's recommended for, for everyone, um, unless you have a contraindication. And what we are telling patients, like if they have a, a serious question about it, then they could just do a telehealth with Dr. Johnson and he could talk to them about it. But most folk are um, A-OK -okay to get the vaccine. I'm going to let that simmer for a few minutes. And I'll start working on my muffins. And then it says season with salt and pepper, but we we um, definitely reduce salts. Another thing I didn't mention. So that also down regulates your endothelium. So the endothelium is the lining of the lining of your vessels. And so to keep ourselves healthy, including our our all our vessels and our heart, um, it's very important to to keep our endothelial endothelial damage low. So as we get older, the more damage that occurs to our endothelium. So for kids that start eating plant-based, like they have the world at their fingertips, right? So they're, they can stay healthy for a really, really long time, hopefully. Um, so like, you know, definitely lower risk of chronic disease. Um, so salt down regulates your endothelium just like um, oil and animal products do. So we, we do reduce salt. Um, okay. I also have my... Brown sugar that I didn't add yet to my tea. So I, I, was, I tried chai um, with uh, coconut sugar the other day, and I that wasn't my favorite. So I'm going to use brown sugar. And so when you, you know a lot of people think, oh, sugar is so unhealthy, but when you eat this way, you definitely have a lot more latitude um, to have some sugar in your diet because it really is for our diabetics, especially. It's not the sugar; it's the oil, the oil in the animal products. Um, so it's very interesting. To watch. There it goes. I'll let that dissolve in there. Stir my mixture. Smell good. Definitely smell the Dijon and the nutritional yeast. The mushrooms are really good for you too. And onions. 
and my finger is starting to bleed. Okay, so for my English muffins, let me move some stuff out of my way. So I did read it, I read lots of recipes trying to find a whole food plant based no oil one. Um, and some of the recipes, most of the recipes said that you should uh, coat with uh, cornmeal. Um, but then one said I should use semolina instead, but I couldn't find whole semolina. All I could find was, um, all I could find was the flour. So I'm going to use cornmeal. So what I've done um, is made my dough ahead of time. It rose. I separated it uh, with a nice little uh, pastry cutter um, and put into six balls because I want to make six English muffins. Uh, and this is kind of easier than rolling it out, so I kind of like this idea. Uh, and then I let those ri ro rise for an hour, proof for an hour. And then I put them into individually wrapped um, saran wraps and put them in the fridge. And so I've let them out. I have my little electric radiator to here to help them prove one more time before I'm ready to bake them. And before baking them, I don't know if you knew this, but you actually um, cook them in a skillet before you bake them. So what we're going to do is coat some uh, with some corn flour first. So I have my little mason jar lid, so I'm just going to push my dough into the lid, which will make a beautiful perfect circle for me and it's going to be easy to push out because I have the circle of the lid. What do you hear? Oh, it's a nice little whistling kettle. Let's see if it's going to get loud enough. Lots of kitchen noises. I think I'm happy with that whistle. So that makes me really happy. So that, that'll be my friend for, for many years to come. And the inside, so it's, um, it's a, so it's enamel on steel. And so the, and the inside is blue. I should have showed you the inside. The, well, it's the same as my old one. So the inside is like enamel, I don't know if you can see it, enamel on steel inside too. So definitely a better quality than my rainbow one that I brought, bought and I had to send back because it wasn't whistling. Um, but I'm happy with this one. So don't settle. All right. I'm going to finish shaping my English muffins. And then I'll start the process of cooking them in the skillet. And then I'll show you the, the aftermath later. All right, so this is all ready to cool. And put in a container for the weekend. Put this out of the way. Okay. Let me get a little bit of stuff on the oven. Okay. All right, next up is continuing with my English muffins. Does anyone else say hi? Hey, Terrence. Good to see you. You should definitely make these, Terrence. So I've never made English muffins before. So these are whole food plant-based, no oil. And I did forget one little thing. So it's, it calls for coconut cream, but we don't do coconut because coconut is high in saturated fat. Um, and it goes crosses your blood brain barrier. So the country that eats the most coconut is Sri Lanka and they have a really high incidence of coronary artery disease and diabetes. Uh, so instead of the coconut cream, I was going to use pumpkin puree, but I forgot. So hopefully these will turn out just fine without that. Um, and I don't know if I'm a skilled enough chef to like really even tell a difference, but as long as these are good, I'm cool. And next time I'll probably will use the, the two tablespoons of, um, pumpkin puree instead. So I'm going to start with these three little muffins. Sprinkle some cornmeal on my little seal pat. I'm just going to kind of lightly dust the top and bottom. And this is just so it gives a little texture and 
helps keep it from sticking to the pan. So I'm using a, a non-stick skillet. Trying to shape these all nicely. also skip the step it says but I kind of like the, the look of an English muffin with a little something something on it. I'll try to shape that one a little bit more circular. I have room for one more in my pan and then the other two will be all by themselves. Of course if anyone has any questions feel free to ask. Uh, a really important thing about whole food plant-based no oil diet is that um, you must take vitamin B12. So if you're not eating animal products, you have to take a supplement. And uh, we we see patients that you come to us vegan and they had no idea that they're supposed to do this. And so we check their B12 level and they're deficient. So a deficiency in vitamin B12 can create like a, a lifelong neurological um, issue. So definitely important to do that. So what we do is we tell patients they should take 100 micrograms a month uh, and that our plant-based chef Mark found that um, uh, found a Solgar brand S-O-L-G-A-R that's available online that comes in that tiny little tablet. So most of them are 1,000 so it's hard to find online or, or in the stores here. So the Solgar brand online is the best one to get. But the other important thing to do is to make sure that we check your levels. So even if, if you don't see us, then you should definitely get your B12 level checked yearly. Uh, so some people require more B12, like me. Uh, and so we can ca help calculate how much exactly that you need. Um, so if you get too much B12, that's why it's not okay to just take a thousand a day without making sure that's exactly what you need. Is that increases your risk of fracture. So um, if you increase your, if you, if you take too much B12, it increases your risk of fracture. And then if you add B6 to that, it increases it even more. So it's a significant uh, study that came out um, last fall. Uh, so will they have the little holes like English muffins at the store? Well, Marlene, that's always my intention, but who, who knows? So to get those holes, you're supposed to, to fork split. So use a fork and just kind of jab it all around without jabbing your hand and then just kind of pull apart gently. So that's what's supposed to create those holes. I've been reading about English muffins. Um, all right, so let's get on it and start cooking these on the stove top. And I'm gonna take my tea bags out. And then I'll just uh, actually, I'll just strain my tea. Let's see what I might put it in. I'm going to put it in this mason jar while my muffins start to cook. Silicone spatula, very handy. All right, my tea is hot. going to go have to go over the sink. Awesome job. Okay. So all that is ready. And now I have lots of dishes to do. Um, so what you'll do with your chai is you can refrigerate it. It says it keeps up to a week, but I keep stuff like that longer because it doesn't have meat in it. And, um, so you just have one part, so like a cup of, well, probably wouldn't do that much, like half a cup of concentrate with half a cup of plant-based uh, milk and you would just heat it up or you could do it iced. And then you can add a little bit more sweetener if you need it or less to taste. Um, 
maybe sprinkle a little cinnamon would be good. And Scout says, how many of our patients have problem keeping weight on? So you, uh, my first comment to that is just look at your doctor. So Dr. Johnson is very, very lean and he um, eats all the time and is an athlete and he's healthy. So he's not cachectic. He's not um, dangerously skinny. He's exactly um, how he should be. Uh, so you want to make sure you eat en enough of what you're eating. So uh, we basically eat all day. So he comes to work with this big bowl of oats, as do I. And um, so he, we certainly try to eat that in the morning, but we end up picking at it all day. Uh, and then we have, of course, lunch and dinner and snacks and fruit. And so it's, it's a, a diet that you eat a lot, a lot of good stuff. Um, so I have five more minutes left. So I'm just making sure these are like golden, golden to dark brown. And then they're going to go on my uh, cook, same cookie sheet that I proofed them on, which I have a nice little cookie sheet with a Silpat liner. And these Silpat liners I had actually had to trim to fit my new cookie sheets. But it's much more fun to, for me than parchment. Or you can use parchment, of course, but I like saving waste and... I don't mind washing them off. Okay, so just watching these guys, and then what I'm going to do when my English muffin is ready uh, is I'm going to bake them. So five to six minutes on each side here. So I might go back and forth. I was always, I was always afraid I'm going to burn something, so I watch it really carefully, and then I will um, transfer them to the still pat and bake for 10 to 20 minutes. So I'll have to, you have to cut into one to test it. And it says here, you know, for science. Um, and then this says slice the muffins in half, but what, mostly what I read said that you're supposed to use a fork to split them. Anyone have any other questions before I go? All right, so one more thing for Scout. So for our patients that that really do need more food, like Dr. Johnson might tell them to add avocado. Um, so it's another thing that's good to do uh, this nutritional treatment under the guise of a physician if you have any specific questions like that. All right, thanks so much everybody. I will let you guys go and I'll show you at least my English muffins um, after. Thanks, bye.